over here. So uh, after I finished my Neiman year, I moved from the supply side of journalism to the demand side. Um, I teach a course called News Literacy, where we try to get students to be critical about the information they're getting from whatever source. And um, every semester, we put Bill Keller on trial for treason. Uh, we use the Swift case. Uh, this semester, actually, we've started to use Glenn Greenwald. And it's really interesting to hear students struggle with these issues. Um, you know, they each play one side of the prosecution or defense team. And I guess the thing I'm hoping, because I think is this is being videotaped, so I'm hoping to grab the clip. I'm interested in this question that students always ask, which is, OK, if power is premised on secrecy, which I think is a pretty good premise, where is that? Where do we make those decisions about how much a government can keep secret and for how long? Because well, certainly, you know, in your work, you've sort of had to balance this in deciding what to put in print. And so I'm just curious what, what your answer would be on that. Well, that I, I, I don't really accept the premise. In fact, I was very impressed by a book that Daniel Patrick Moynihan wrote that's about secrecy that basically argues secrecy weakens power. I, I think for the most part, it should be the exception to the rule and that better decisions are made when there's a competition of ideas and they takes place in broad daylight. I mean, that's the whole idea of our system. And so I, I think secrecy leads to often very poor decision making and that's really what happened during the Bush years in the CIA. Um, and it would have been much better if there'd been public, more public debate. It's also how we get legitimacy in this country. You need to have public support. Um, and I actually think the public is often quite sensible. So I, don't, I guess I don't accept the premise. I think secrecy is important for some intelligence operations and certainly military operations. That, and that's I think actually the press more where they end up getting stuck. I think everybody agrees on the government end, but on the but operations some. end, mm -hmm. At what point does operational secrecy, you know, at what point do you as a journalist think about operational secrecy and say, you know what, I'm going to inject and make the decision that this operation needs to be exposed? A lot. I mean, I think this is something very, that, that journalists have to be very thoughtful and editors about and not just do a knee jerk, we're going to publish because we have it. I mean, not all secrets are equal. And some, some are really important for the public to know, and some are really important to keep secret because people's lives are in the balance. Um, you know, I would never publicize a military operation about to take place. Um, I, I think, though, what's, what I would like to see is the government do a better job of it, not just saying national security is at risk. Explain it. So before, if we're going to hold back a story, which is a very big deal um, in this country, you really ought to be given strong evidence that national security really is at risk. Because frequently we see things like the Drake case that Bill Kovach mentions, where it, it, it wasn't at risk. It, he was going to be prosecuted as if he was some major spy, and he totally was not. Um, and sometimes it's just a turf war, or it's about covering up something embarrassing. So I, anyway, I, I think that, that you know, it requires thoughtfulness on the press's part but also um, dialogue with the government on these things. I forgot to tell you the good news is that Keller is almost always acquitted. <laughs> <laughs> That's good.